So as you can see here on the screen, if you go to mylinkdrive.com, click on the flag, click on software. When you scroll down, you'll see Diamond System Builder. This is the Diamond System Builder notes and sections. There's a couple of installation guides. So if you have a really old version of Diamond System Builder, like one, two, or three, uh, you're going to have to remove the old Diamond System Builder before you install the new one. It's just not going to be able to update. So there's a guide on how to remove it uh, with Windows. And then, of course, a guide to update. So if you have anything in the last year or two, you have version four, and uh, it'll just update within the app. The actual software download is at the bottom here. You'll see 4.4.2. That is the most recent version. There are revisions that uh, and database numbers. I'm going to show you where to find those to make sure you're working with the most uh, recent uh, DSB, uh, which has all the most recent equipment and calculations. So just to make sure everybody knows, if you don't get a copy of this recording, if you go to your contractor portal and go to learning, there is a Diamond System Builder software training that's under learning plans. It's about an hour and a half and it walks you through different modules, but it's a complete training done on e-learning style. So there's questions and stuff as you go. I'd highly recommend it for you or anyone in your team that's going to be uh, sizing or selecting systems. It certainly is a, a big part of the design process. This would actually count as what's called ACA Manual S equipment selection. So if you ever run across a, a building inspector that requires a manual S report, the reports that come out of Diamond System Builder would satisfy that requirement. All right. So they walk you through all of the different pieces. I'm going to focus on residential specific applications today and all the pieces you need to know if you're doing re residential uh, M&P products. All right. So when you open Diamond System Builder, after you download it, it's going to show you this front screen. I highly recommend if you have an internet connection that you log into the software program. This will actually let you save projects and share within your team or even outside of your organization if there's an issue or question with us over at Mitsubishi or somebody at Taurus. So uh, when you first log in, it'll give you the option of creating a login. I highly recommend you use an a email address that's probably company-based so that way somebody knows the email, if you were to share that project with uh, somebody, especially outside your organization. Um, you can see I have a list of projects I've saved here, just a handful over the years. Uh, the first piece I want to make sure you guys check out is that you're on the most recent version. So anytime you go to the home screen up on the top, you'll see down on the bottom, there's software version 4.4.2, and we're on the 24th revision of that, so 0.24. The database starts with the same numbers, 4.4.2, but we're actually on 0.17 for the database. If you are on an older version and it's still version four, if you go back to file, you can just click update DSB and with an internet connection, it'll run through and update the software and the, uh, the database as needed, okay? Um, if I were to click this now, you'll see it's gonna tell me I have the most recent version. And if something's wrong, would I like to repair it? Of course, I'm going to say no, because I don't want it to download while everybody's sitting here watching me. All right. So when you first open the screen, and I forgot to say, if you have any questions as we go, uh, make sure you put them in the chat. I'm sure one of the Taurus uh, team members will monitor that for us. Um, and I do plan on ending this a little early. So times for uh, there's plenty of time for FAQs. Um, First thing you'll always do when you get to this screen and you're going to start a new project, you just click on new. It's on the left hand side under the file or I double click on new um, and then you'll see anything with a box is required. So it opens your first screen and under project properties, you'll see it auto automatically pre selects US UL rated equipment old and new gener model generations. This is important if you're going to be adding, um, at, say, an indoor unit to an older condenser or replacing it a condenser to see if it's compatible with indoor units. And then, of course, your default brand is going to be Mitsubishi Electric. There are some other options in there um, if you work elsewhere in the Northeast. On the right-hand side, of course, 60 hertz for the United States and our 410A, you'll see CO2 is selected. That's for commercial equipment that we have. And then there's some options to type in project date or any other CAD comments, things like that. Um, the only thing you have to select on this particular screen is if it's plan and spec or design build. Design build would apply to all of your residential projects. If this building is already put up and there's not a specification, you select design build. 
Mitsubishi does track these on the back end. If there's a lot of projects going in that are plan and spec, it helps us start to develop uh, a need for inventory. Uh, but it's looking at least a year, year and a half out for something like that to impact it. Okay. So 99% of the time you're going to select design build. And I'm just going to walk across the tabs up top so you can see things that pertain residentially. Always keep the 130% max connection. The others apply to our commercial um, pieces. The only time you might want to change this is if you're doing uh, a ducted system on a multi-zone. There's not a hard and fast rule unless you're working on port types that you don't connect over 100%, but a lot of your DSGs will recommend you don't connect over 100% capacity for indoor units if you're using a ducted system. And that's to make sure you have enough capacity, especially latent capacity for that coil. So that I highly recommend you just keep it connected for 130 and I'll show you how everything derates as we go. Indoor unit, we always select residential equipment for full demand. Full demand is uh, what is everything running at your design temperatures. So if every all the indoor units are running at full demand, what you're going to get out of each zone. There are other options here if you're using VRF or something like that um, for partial demand or partial cooling with full heating. Um, for residential applications, you want to keep this on full demand for obvious reasons. We select equipment at full demand at our design temps. And then of course, D rates, we're gonna start with 1.0 on all these at auto pre, uh, it pre-fills. So don't adjust these. The system as we build it will start to adjust. Design conditions, you notice every time you open it up, if you don't set a default, it's gonna come up with Alexander City in Alabama. Um, and I always, it's not necessarily a joke, but imagine if you lived in Alabama, how much time you would save on all these auto fills, right? Um, every time I fill out anything, it starts with Alabama. So um, you can select your closest city. So as an example here, let's say I'm working in New Hampshire. You'll see Berlin pops up first. There's a design temperature that's actually a little bit uh, warmer than negative 14. This is ASHRAE data. So a little more aggressive than your manual J load calcs. These numbers should match your manual J load calculation. All right. So what you want to do is select the city closest click manual, and then you can just override the temperature out, outside, right? So this is all outdoor air temp. If you do not change this at the very beginning, you'll notice it starts with some crazy numbers and it's actually ASHRAE information for AHRI and how the system's tested in a laboratory, not re-rated on how it's going to work at your design temperature. So it's really important that you set this up first. And once you have uh, the area that you always work in, what you can do is save that area and set default. So every time you open it, it opens with that default. So as an example here, I live closest to Worcester, Massachusetts. And you'll notice if I select Worcester, because I saved that in there, it's going to automatically pre-fill design temperatures for Worcester outside. And then of course, inside is actually set by code. So cooling dry bulb is 75 degrees with a 50% relative humidity is what the IECC and the IRC requires. You're not allowed to deviate from that. Heating dry bulb, you're allowed plus or minus two degrees in the same code books um, from 70 degrees. So you can go as low as 68 and as high as 72, all right? So you should fall within that range. That's for code purposes. And we're not gonna be working with any air to water stuff for residential yet. So this stuff does not apply down here. Um, once you're good there, obviously if you move over, there's some more, uh, new construction or commercial type pieces where you can under the submittal package type in design or architect information contractor would be yourself maybe your company logo for reports and then if there's an extended warranty this actually has to be completed if you're doing commercial products residential m p products this does not apply to even though there's little red stars everywhere all right so i'm gonna hit okay and it's gonna actually ask me which system i'm working on all Taurus uh, contractors are going to be working on the green systems on the bottom. So M series, P series, or MXZs. All right. So I'm going to do a simple one-to-one -one first and then show you a more complex MXZ to see how um, some things are adjusted. All right. So I'm just going to collect, con uh, connect a P series. We'll just do a, a one-to-one one -to -one ducted system for a house here. So when I select OK, it's going to actually pop up all my P series condensers in capacity order and generation order. 
So you can see here, um, there is model filters. I can actually select just hyperheat models. And then the models will actually go shrink down to just the hyperheat models, two through three and a half tons. I could also select cooling only or standard um, variable speed heat pumps. If I'm working on a co-branded product, I could change it up top as well. So you can see here, um, I'm actually going to keep a hyperheat ducted system I'm going to do. So I'm going to say it's a three ton one to one hyperheat. And you'll notice the revision numbers are in here. The most recent is the dash five, right? So I'm going to select that condenser. And then underneath here, I'd have to put in the, you'll, you'll see A. Anytime you see A, it's a, a distance for pipe. So I can put it here or I can list it when I do the indoor unit because a P series is just one to one. So let's say I'm going to use a 30, line, 30 foot line set and I'm going to have a couple of hard 90s in that line set. If you have a long sweeping 90, this is not going to put in, you're not going to put that number in for the bend. But if you have a hard 90, let's say, please forgive me. I, um, I don't know exactly what Taurus sells offhand, but, um, you know, the ones that you would use the machine for a hard 90, right? Um, then you would put that in there. Main zoom unit lock. height. Oh, what, what was it, Scott? Zoom lock. Oh, zoom lock. Thank you. I didn't want to, I didn't want to say a name that wasn't sold by, uh, by our friends at Taurus. So uh, main unit height would be the condenser off of ground. So ideally, this is going to be a positive number, right? Because it's a heat pump and it's hyperheat. It should be off the ground. Um, so let's say it's a foot and a half off. We can just say 1.5 or we can make that two or three if it's up on a wall. Um, but it should not be a negative number for this. Negative numbers do apply to indoor units if the indoor unit is below the condensers. Like let's say the condensers on a roof. If you're working in the city, you go down a few floors, it could be minus 20, let's say. All right. The system is going to keep track and derate each indoor zone based on the elevation, the line set length, um, and operating conditions, okay? So this is actually the minimum amount that you need to fill in for this. You can also go to advanced, and you can see you can make some adjustments. Um, you can override your project design conditions here if you have a situation where one condenser is designed for a different operating condition than the rest of them. Also, it'll list every accessory in the Mitsubishi catalog. And you can add this to the reports if you were to select it for that. So as an example, if I wanted a, um, uh, so I'm pick something normal here. Let's say I wanted line hide. Um, I don't know why you would purchase line hide uh, when you can buy the other brands from Taurus, but the, all that stuff's in here, right? Including um, wall sensors, filters, things like that for the indoor units, condensate pumps, anything in our catalog is listed for that condenser there, all right? So I'm gonna hit okay and you'll see, it'll pop up a picture of the condenser that I chose. It'll give me the line set sizes. So three eighths, five eighths. It'll tell me 30 feet, cause that's what I typed in for actual feet of pipe. And there's two bends here. Um, you'll notice 1.5 is the feet off of ground. So that's the unit height, unit elevation. All I have to do is click and drag an indoor unit on the right hand side over to where that dotted line is. So I'm going to hold down on multi-position and drag it over. And you'll, you'll see the no-go sign right now. As soon as I get onto a point where I can drop it, it'll say plus. I let go of my mouse and it opens an indoor unit detail, right? And you can see here, it auto pre-fills the compatible indoor unit. So there's only one, but you'll see there's two revisions. So if I want the most recent PVA, I'll select the dash seven. It auto fills pipe length and the number of bends. I just have to fill in unit height. So let's say this is going up into an attic on a couple of floor uh, home. So we'll say it's 20 feet. All right. I can also name the room if I wanted to name a room. This is really important if you have a, a complex system with a lot of indoor units. Um, or you can also group them um, in different groups. This really applies to larger applications like multifamily or hotels, things like that, where you might be putting some MXZs in and you want to group for control purposes. Same thing on the top here, though, you can see advanced, you can override some design temperatures, and then all of the accessories that are in here, including air zone, um, Sourman pumps, disconnect switches, um, even the um, the diamond, uh, blue diamond pumps on the bottom as well. So anything on our catalog for that unit would be listed under accessories. So I hit OK, and you'll see it, it pops a picture here. It's actually going to give me the total cooling at our design conditions. So for this three ton system at our design conditions, we're actually going to get 
30,316 total BTUs per hour. And out of that, sensible is going to be 26,398. The difference would be latent. And then at our design conditions and heating, which I believe was zero in Worcester, uh, 33,883. So you'll see it derates a little bit because of the line set length. And uh, we're a little bit below five degrees, which is where we get 100% capacity on our hyperheat products. So this, you would think, is good to go. But if you don't select any controls, it won't let you export. So most people will, this is the number one call I get. Most people will try to export this screen quickly. If you were to select export up top as a PDF, it's going to throw you an error code. It's going to do a global check to make sure the systems are compatible, um, that you selected, as in, in this case, a controller. There's no controller with that ducted system, so it's reminding me that I need one. All right. So this is one of the best features about using Diamond System Builder. It's not going to let you design a system that's not compatible. It's also going to give you a lot of outputs like uh, your operating conditions um, and the BTUs available, as well as when we do multi-zones, how much refrigerant charge to add um, based on all those line set sizes and lengths. So I'm going to go back to home on the top and just click on controls view. And on controls view, you can see there's no controller selected. If this was, let's say, a wall mount system on an M series, you would see it auto fill the, uh, the remote that comes with it. This is really easy on the right hand side. I apologize. I had to move my, my video so I can see it. Um, you can see I can just select as, as an example here, MHK, and it'll actually uh, give you a checkbox. So if you have more than one unit, each unit's going to be group one, group two, group three. If I have, let's say, three ducted one to ones in that house, I'll have the option of assigning to each group. So in this case, it's going to be group one, and I just want to select the most recent, which is MHK2. When I hit OK, you'll see a picture of the MHK2 will pop up. And now when I go to export, you'll see it runs, the, um, it runs everything and it gives you options. So there's no errors. And really, when you do export here for residential applications, you only need design and piping view. You can add controls view if it's complex. Um, I'll, I'll leave controls view on there if you want, so you can see it. So when I hit okay, it's actually going to ask me if I want to save it. It's going to take a second. I guess this happens when I'm streaming video. I'm just going to name it test, throw it on my desktop, and it's going to open up a very similar picture as to what I was working on. So you can see the screen. This is the report that you would use this front page. It's going to give you um, your capacity, total pipe length. So obviously this can go up as long as 245. We only use 32 feet. Um, and it's 30 feet plus two bends. That's why it's 32. And you'll see temperature D rates, piping D rates, um, defrost, if you're going to be uh, running a lot of defrost cycles based on your area, what the total refrigerant charge is, and, and if you have to add any additional plus your design conditions that you entered, which should match your manual J load calculation. And then of course, all the outputs I already talked about on the right-hand side. So this is the front page. You'll notice the piping is the exact same, which is piping view, which is page two. Page three, you'll see controllers. So it will be a list. And then of course, four is just the diamond system builder stamp. All right. So that's the quickest and easiest one-to-one -one system. I'm just going to head back here. Um, sorry about that and just mention a few things. So if you ever get lost and you're trying to do this and you don't know what's going on, if you click on help, there's actually a Diamond System Builder handbook. That handbook is a PDF that's 48 pages long. Um, you can see here there is up at the top a, um, a nice table of contents so you can quickly get to where you need to go. Um, I highly recommend if this is the first time you do this, watch maybe this video, then walk through the training on my learning on, on your contractor portal, and then use this as a reference. Okay. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. Of course, um, there is a, a piece here too. So if you're not sure where to find if what version you're operating on, you can click about Diamond System Builder. It'll tell you that. Um, up at the top too, there's a couple other tabs. So you can see there's tools. So you could at any time run a global check to see if everything's good without waiting until the end. So if you're building a complex system, um, you can see up at the top, uh, there's different units that you can select for controllers. Um, and then 
under display. This is one uh, when you first download Diamond System Builder, and I'm just going to click them on so you can see what I mean. Um, it comes with everything checked off. And if I was to go back to my design view, if I left everything checked off and I gave this report to a homeowner, you can see it gives you an estimated heating discharge air temperature of 98.9 and 52.2 in cooling, which obviously could cause you some, some heartache down the road on service. So I highly recommend under display, you uncheck discharge temperatures. Um, that would obviously be with everything running at your design temperatures, which is almost never, right? Um, but you definitely want to show who, who, cooling and heating capacities and uh, model numbers. Those are the def, those are the at least minimum pieces you want to show on there. Um, and then, of course, export. I exported the the uh, PDF version, which is the most common, especially for a single zone. When I do the multi zone here in a second, I'm going to export uh, project info and schedules, which gives you a much better, um, let's say, project uh, stock list. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go back to home, I'm sorry, file, and I'm just gonna start a new project. It'll overwrite what's here. So I'm not gonna save changes to the current project and it's gonna just pop up a new project screen. So I'm quickly gonna get back to where we were. Um, so I apologize for not saying every click I'm doing here, um, but I'll, I'll mention a few. So I'm gonna select design build. I'm gonna to go to design conditions, select the one that I'm working in because I set that up as my default, which this is, happens to be Worcester, Massachusetts. I hit OK. Now I'm going to choose MXZ for multi-zone. So when I choose MXZ, you'll notice it says centralized system up on the left-hand side. And it's going to be system number one. And it automatically pops up with all of the options for uh, every, everything since a, um, a B series condenser. So the, the one generation ago, plus all of the revisions since we went to C series. So there's a lot of options in here. So I can filter, as an example, to hyperheat. I can display, um, obviously, model number because we're we're in the trade. We know what the model numbers are. If you don't know what, what the model numbers are, you can click model number guide. And it'll open a PDF for you to help you walk through model numbers. And I'm just going to select a branch box system here. So uh, the new Smart Multi 36K. I know that's one that we have a tough time getting inventory on. So sorry to highlight it here. They are coming. Um, so branch box power supply, it's going to ask us if we're going to run it from the condenser. So outdoor unit powers the branch box, or are they going to be powered separately? Because obviously there'd be an accessory that's added and how it's wired is going to be different, right? So I'm going to select that. We're just going to power it from the branch box, which is probably 90% of the installations out there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say it's a foot and a half off the ground. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to give me one set of pipes coming off that system. So obviously I need to add a branch box or more than one branch box. So if I'm going to add more than one, I would first do a, a joint pipe. It'll ask me how many feet from the condenser to the joint pipe. So I'll just say 10 feet and two bends. When I hit OK, you'll notice it gives me the part number of that joint pipe. And it also now lets me connect two branch boxes to the system. All right. Let's say I did not want two branch boxes because now I can get a five zone branch box instead of two threes. I can just click on the MSDD joint pipe and hit delete and it goes away. All right. So I'm going to click and drag a five zone branch box over and you'll notice it pops up. It auto fills anything I filled prior. So you can see 10 feet with two bends and we'll say it's just on the other side of the wall in a basement. When I hit okay, you'll notice now it fills five options off of the five zone branch box. For anybody that's done an SM36 or a 4C36 in the past, you know the maximum is five. I'm sorry, four, not five. So if I were to try to connect five, it'll actually give you an error code. So when I'm building the system, if I know I can't connect it, I like to just go ahead and put an end cap on that one right out the gate so that way you know. Also, the system is not smart enough to rearrange indoor units in order to cut down on the possibility of using port adapters. So the, the MKA52, the branch box, actually has a larger connection for the first port connection than the rest of them. So what I highly recommend is when you're connecting anything 
to a port type condenser or a branch box in Diamond System Builder, put the largest one on the first to try to cut down on the possibility of needing any port adapters, okay? Largest capacity size. All right, so in this example here, I'll actually connect a ducted unit, let's say a, a one ton ducted uh, SVZ air handler. I happen to pop up with that model number. Um, we're gonna put that up in an attic. So we'll say it's 20 feet up, a couple of bends. Oops, I did that wrong. We'll say it's 30 feet of pipe and 20 feet up. There we go. And if I wanted to say what this is, I'll do a second floor air handler. All right. So that'll actually pop up. I just want to do at least one so you can see it. So when I hit OK, you'll see it'll pop up. It'll say unit one, second air handler is for second floor. It'll give me right now the capacity I'm going to get out of that one ton system without anything else connected. So as I connect things, you're going to see these numbers start to shift around. And this is important um, after the fact, if you, a system's not keeping up or something and you want to see what's going to happen when I shut an indoor unit off, I could just delete it. It would tell me. So right now with this unit connected, I'll get a little over 10,000 BTUs in cooling and about 14 and a half in heating at our design temps. I'm also going to do some wall mounts downstairs and let's say this Cape style home. So I'm going to click wall mount, click and drag it over. And you'll see a 6,000 BTU pop up, but we're going to use a nine. So I'm going to put an FS09 downstairs. Um, off that branch box, I may need 20 feet of pipe to get back out there. And we'll say three bends. And it's only um, 10 feet above the ground for that wall height. Uh, we can add another room and name this family room. Hit OK. And you'll see it starts to pull a little bit of BTUs from here as we get closer to our maximum capacity. Now, let's say the rest of them are FS09s. All I have to do up on the top here, there's a drag behavior option. You'll see if I click and drag on something, right now I have copy and paste. I could also cut and paste. So if I have it on cut and paste, I can click this and move it to the other port. It just moves it. If I have it on copy and paste, I can click and drag. It'll just put the exact same unit in that other option as well. So it'll make things go much faster when you're using a lot of the same systems. I like to do this if they're the same. If they're not, clicking and dragging it over from the right to get a different capacity is close to the same amount of work. And then, of course, I'll put this one on here as well. So you'll see I got three FS09s and a 12K, and that's 18, 27, 39. So slightly overconnected on this branch box system. All right. Um, if I tried to hook up another one, I'll get rid of that. You'll notice it'll throw an error code when I go to do this. It's actually not letting me do it. That's funny. Adding child not allowed. That's an interesting way of saying you can't add an additional indoor unit. All right. So we'll put the end cap on there. And um, I already know that we can't export this without selecting a controller for the indoor units. But if I go to controls view, you'll see it has remotes for all the indoors and does not have anything listed for that ducted system. So I'm going to click on MHK2. And it'll ask me, do I want to replace those remotes with MHK2s as well? Sure, let's let's do that. Select all. That's oh, not letting me. Isn't that fun? It should be able to. That seems like a glitch. I'm going to have to reach out. All right, so I hit OK. It selects that one. I can actually switch. If I click double click on the remote, it looks like it'll let me switch it to an MHK. Just thinks it won't let you do them all at once. All right. So you have to go to each one if you're going to replace it right now. They used to be able to in the old version. Now I'm going to go up and I'm actually going to export this for info and schedules. And you'll notice it checks everything. I highly recommend you just leave it all checked. And this is why. When I hit OK, it's going to open up an Excel file. And it's going to give you some awesome export information as a job file. Just going to take a second to pop this up. Almost there, there we go. So the, each tab is a separate page. You'll notice um, you could, if you typed in a project name and number or any comments, it would show up on page one. When I click on contents, it's gonna tell you which tab has each piece, right? So you'll see unit quantities, system images, all the detailed schedules, and of course, submittals for everything you selected. 
So what's cool here, if when I go to unit quantities, it'll actually tell me all the Mitsubishi uh, stuff that I selected, plus how much pipe and the length of the pipe and any bends. If I was going to be adding bends, the number of bends you'll need for each one. It's pretty cool. It does all the calculations for you on that. Hold on one second. I got to move video one more time. There we go. Hopefully. <laughs> try this there we go all right system one you'll see uh, there's only one system if i had multiple systems it would throw the same design view uh outputs for you so it tells you what the capacities are for each zone the elevation the pipe sizes the feet of pipe the number of bends um, all of the part numbers and where they're going if you have uh labeled those rooms so second floor air handler this is the family room but since i copied and pasted they all say family You'd have to go in and change those. The outdoor unit information, this is right off the submittal. So this is all of our design temperatures um, that we entered, plus the capacities off the submittal. Um, pretty quick and easy. You can do the same thing for the indoor units. And then, of course, the branch box information as well. So everything that we selected, it autofills in that one submittal package. So it makes your life a lot easier if you have a complex job. Let's say I had two or three multi-zones at a big house. It almost gave me a stock list that I could send over to my TM or go on. Uh, please forgive me, Taurus Ecom. I don't know what the exact website is, but you can go on that with that. Unfortunately, it's not connected yet. Uh, I don't know if it's ever going to be, but um, if we could just roll that into orders, that'd be awesome. All right. So that's, a, that's an MXZ. If I was to go and save this job, um, I want to hit save. I'm going to title the job um, MXZ DSV training. I'll hit OK. And now when I go back to my file screen, you'll see this job is actually saved. If I want to share this, I can hit share. And I can add. Um, oh, this changed. Um, I can, you can see, I can either share a copy, which means somebody can't edit it. I can share and allow that recipient to edit, or I can share, allow the recipient to edit and also send it to another person if I wanted to. Um, one second, I'm going to see, uh, so typically you just type in emails. So I'm going to send this to Chad. Add. At least one user. There we go. I'm going to hit share and he's going to get an email. And he should be able to edit that if he opens it up in Diamond System Builder. So there'll be a link. It'll actually open in Diamond System Builder. He can make changes and then send it back to me if he wanted to. Um, I did not let him send it to anybody else, though. All right. So that's a restriction that you could also put on your technicians. So what I found the most useful and here for these through. projects. Oh, yep. Yeah. Scott, uh, Chad, you get that? Oh, I thought nope. you had unmuted there, Chad. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just unmuted. Um, it came through, Chris. So Awesome. So yeah, pretty simple. You just have to enter email addresses and then, of course, save your most frequent users. What I would say is anybody on your service or install team is ones that you want to list in there. Um, that way you'd save them. It makes it easy to share the projects. So what's cool here is if you were to share the project and you make it so they can edit it, I can go back, click on design view, and notice I just put 30, 20, 20, 20. Let's say this was actually 35 feet I used on the job, and this was only 10. And this one stayed 20, but this one went up to 35. This is obviously going to change the amount of uh, the amount of additional refrigerant needed on the right hand side here. Or if I go to um, if I go to export this. As a PDF, you'll see uh, almost there. You'll see it's an easy spot to look at it. On the left-hand side, this needs now 7.16 pounds of refrigerant. So it's really easy for your technicians in the field or maybe a service manager or somebody in the office to make those adjustments to what actually went in for feet to get the right calculated uh, additional refrigerant charge. You'll notice by changing the feet slightly, it may adjust a few BTUs here. It's not going to be drastic, though. If you save a couple of feet, it's not going to drastically change your output. 
Now, what I connect to the system could drastically change the output. All right. Um, and actually, the most common issue, um, close all tabs. There we go. The most common issue I see with connection and not running things through Diamond System Builder is with a port type hyperheat condenser, which is probably the most popular condensers that that we sell and you guys you guys sell and install. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing here uh, just to get back to select a port type MXZ. We'll say a 3C30, which is a very popular system. Um, and if you only, if you guys didn't know, if you only connect two zones to a 3C30, the output capacity actually derates 20%. If you have all three connected, the system actually has enough pipe and connected systems indoors to run that compressor up to 100%. So as an example here, if I was to put um, a very popular option is maybe an 18K in an attic off of a 3C30 and then run a couple of single zone units downstairs. So let's say um, 20 feet, two bends, 15 feet up into a ranch or something. And then let's say, I think I could do two sixes. There we go. So two sixes. So 10, two, so you'll notice here out of that 18,000 BTUs that are design conditions, which is not extreme, it's in Worcester. We designed to 87 in Worcester. Um, we're only going to get 13.8 in cooling, 14.9 in heating. And that's uh, mainly because this system only gives me 27,000 BTUs when everything's connected out of a 3C30 at five degrees. If I was to delete this third connected system, it doesn't get it much better. It just derates by that amount. It's pretty crazy. And a lot of people don't realize this because they don't run it through Diamond System Builder or use those tools. They just think, oh, I put an 18K and I'm going to get 18 at whatever my design temp is. And it's not necessarily the case. All right. Um, so this is a doesn't sound like a big difference, but when you only need 18, that's a big percentage that you're missing. Right. So please forgive me. Unless it's commissions, I, I, I can't figure it out in my head and I have to use a calculator. But 14 divided by 18 is you're losing 23% of the capacity uh, when you hook that up to a, a port type condenser. All right. Um, so I went almost the full 45 minutes that I had planned for this. Does anybody have any questions on Diamond System Builder? I'm going to keep my, my screen shared. So if you have a question, I can show you in Diamond System Builder as opposed to uh, too much theory. So Chad, was there anything that came in on chat or? No, no, I was just going to say that, Chris. There's nothing okay. in chat, but if you guys, uh, you guys feel free to use that platform. But if you want to unmute yourself too, while Chris is on here. We'll hey, I do have a question. Yes, Luis. Yep. All right. So I was under the understanding that when you have outdoor unit elevation and you do indoor unit elevation, that the elevation was between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit? Yeah, you can do it that way if you make the outdoor unit zero for elevation, okay. um, and, which would be ground, and then okay. uh, the indoor difference, right? The The system will, will do the difference. So as an example here, if I say this condenser, I had, I had kept it at zero, uh, say 1.5. 1, 1. Let's say I made this 10 feet off the ground. It, uh, it'll actually calculate the difference between this 10 feet off the ground and this 20 feet off the ground. Okay. If I made and this then zero. The same thing when it was into branch boxes, I thought yes. we had to compensate for the height of the branch box. So you do. Um, hold on one second. New project. So let me just show you. I uh, hit yes. Um, you know what? Let me, let me just open up the one that I did. That'd probably be the easiest. There we go. So when you click on the branch box here, it'll actually ask unit height. I said zero because it was on the other side of the condenser, but mm -hmm. this could be above or below. This could be minus, let's say in a basement, minus five feet. And it'll recalculate everything based on the difference in elevation here. So you'll notice since this is a foot and a half off the ground, it's actually going to know that it's six and a half feet difference here. Okay. And from this up to 20 feet is actually 25 right? Because it's a minus five there from the branch box. All right. So, what, so yeah. always from the floor up. That's what I was thinking. We, we, I was understanding that it was like, okay, branch box up to the units or down to the units. 
and then to the condenser. But basically oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So with a branch box here, this is not 20 feet from the branch box. This is 20 feet from ground. Right. All right. And this is five minus five feet from ground, if that makes sense. And then the, yeah, the calculator sense. will do that math for you. So obviously you can go, I think it's 48 feet above or below the, the that branch box. Anything more than that, it'll throw an error. Perfect. Chris, Chris, if you can, show them a, a 215s connected to a, a 30. Because yeah, that's absolutely. The, that's the most surprising Thanks, one for contractors to see. Yeah, because you assume because you have... Uh, you're going to get 15,000 each one. Yeah, yeah. So that's another that's another popular connection. Um, 3C30 hyperheat. So 215 wall mounts, I assume, Joe? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll just do some very simple close stuff. So you can see here in cooling, you're only going to get in, in Worcester, 9,935. And in heating at our design temp at zero, you get a little over 10. So 10, five, um, you don't get the actual nominal nominal rating out of that system. Um, and this is, this is actually a popular connection where a lot of people will put this on a Cape or a colonial on one side of the house, and then they'll do the exact same on the opposite side of the house. And when you add up that output, it's far from what you would get with our ducted, uh, I'm sorry, our, our, our branch box systems, right? So you can see 9,935 um, out of a 15,000 BTU system on the indoor. That's because we derate the system with only two selected because the compressor can't ramp up to 100%. And we're derating based on temperature and line set length as well. All right. So if I was to go back as an example here and just modify this branch box system, which is a, a, a SM36 with just four of those same units. So let me just delete this. I'll make this a 15K. Oh, can I go that, that high? Yeah, I think I can go that high. Please, I can't go that high. That would have been too easy. We actually get more out of a 12K than we do the 15s when it's on a, on a, on a thing. So don't, sorry not to go too deep here. I was trying to give you an example so you can see we get more out of a 12K connected to a, a SM36 than we do a 15K connected to a 3C30 because the compressor with the branch box has a lot more ramping capability um, and it doesn't derate when you only connect two systems to it. <laughs> so um, you'd think it would only be 6,000 BTUs more, but the heat output is significantly more, right? You were only getting about, please forgive me, um, somewhere around 10,000 BTUs a piece out of the 15K. So 20K, where you're going to get 41K out of a 36 with a branch box. All right. Hopefully that helps explain a little bit, Joe. Thanks for that example. So yeah, um, highly recommend until, unless you guys have some more questions, take a look at the Diamond System uh, Builder software training. This is actually relatively new. It only came out a couple months ago. Um, it's, so it's up to date for the most recent version. Um, and before I forget, and I'm going to stay on if you guys still have questions, but I want to throw this QR code up here. So our team wants to make sure you have the opportunity to give us um, some product improvement uh, suggestions or, or even, um, you know, even ideas for new products as well. So this is something we typically just do around Diamond Contractor uh, events. But since I had the opportunity and I had the QR code, if you scan that QR code, it's going to take you to a smart sheet. And we'd love to hear your feedback based on those questions that are on that smart sheet. All right. Um, I think the the best improvements and the coolest products like the MLZ were suggestions from our contractors. So highly recommend um, you take uh, a few moments, particularly if you have an idea or something that we can fix to make your life easier.